In this video, I'm going to explain how the RAS system, or the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, is going to help restore blood pressure when there is a sudden drop in blood pressure. So there could be various reasons that uh, could result in a sudden drop in blood pressure in, in an individual, and some examples of a drop in blood pressure could be caused by blood loss, for example. Um, or it could be caused by dehydration. When you are not taking uh, enough fluid, then your blood volume is going to go down, which could in turn result in a drop in blood pressure. So when the blood pressure decreases, uh, what's going to happen is the uh, amount of blood that is flowing into the glomerulus uh, at the kidney is going to decrease. So if you remember the structure of uh, the uh, nephron, this is the Bowman's capsule, and you would have the afferent arterial going in to the Bowman's capsule, becoming the glomerulus, and then exiting as the uh, uh, efferent arterial. So at the afferent arterial, uh, the walls of the blood vessels actually are going to have a cluster of specialized cells, and these cells are called the uh, juxtaglomerular apparatus, or JGA. The function uh, of the JGA is to monitor the uh, rate at which the blood is going into the glomerulus. So when there is a drop in blood pressure, what's going to happen is this is going to trigger the JGA to release an enzyme. And the name of the enzyme is renin. So renin uh, is going to activate a plasma protein. That plasma protein comes from your liver. So as you know, um, one of the many functions of liver is to produce plasma protein, uh, such as albumin, uh, fibrinogen, so on and so forth. And one um, other plasma protein that the liver produces is called angiotensinogen. Now you can kind of tell from the uh, from the suffix of the uh, protein name that this is inactive at the moment. Okay, so if you're not suffering from low blood pressure, in other words, if your blood pressure is at homeostasis, then the angi angiotensinogen is going to stay inactive and it's just going to be circulating in your bloodstream. However, when you experience uh, a drop in blood pressure, JGA will now release the renin in response, and in the presence of renin, angiotensinogen is going to be activated into angiotensin number one okay now angiotensin one uh, for simplicity for simplicity's sake um, is not going to have uh, any immediate effect okay uh, we still have to activate it one more time uh, into angiotensin number two and in order to convert it from number one to number two, you would have to have an other uh, enzyme that does this. And this enzyme is going to be produced at the lungs, and it's called angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE for short. Okay. So once you've created angiotensin number two, then there are two main uh, action that it's going to have on the body. Number one, it is going to cause vasoconstriction. It kind of makes sense that you want to uh, cause the blood vessels to, to become more narrow because we are suffering from a drop in blood pressure. So by decreasing the diameter of the blood vessel, that is going to help you restore the blood pressure. So this will result in an increase of BP. Okay. The second thing that angiotensin 2 will do is it's going to trigger the release of an, a hormone. Um, and, and the hormone is called aldosterone. Aldosterone comes from the adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex basically refers to uh, the outer part of the adrenal gland. And if you um, 
forget where the adrenal gland is if this is the kidney the adrenal gland is just going to be sitting on top of it so you would have uh, two adrenal glands one on top of each kidney and uh, again the adrenal gland is separated into the outer portion which is called the adrenal cortex and the inner portion which is called the adrenal medulla so in this particular case the aldosterone is going to be released from the adrenal cortex so what is the uh, aldosterone going to do to restore the blood pressure well, aldosterone is actually going to uh, be distributed throughout the body, but its effect is going to be primarily uh, on the nephrons. So specifically, it's going to uh, act on the distal tubule as well as the collecting duct of your nephron. So if you remember, again, the structure of the, the nephron, right? Uh, this is the distal tubule and this is the collecting duct. So in the presence of aldosterone, what's going to happen is it's going to increase sodium and chloride absorption at the distal tubule and collecting duct. Um, so if I were to draw the, um, the the blood vessel right here, this is, would be like part of the peritubial capillaries. In the presence of aldosterone, what's going to happen is you're going to uh, take some of the salt in the uh, uh, filtrate and you're going to put them back into your bloodstream. If you do that, then you will also increase uh, water absorption. And this is going to happen mostly by osmosis because, as you know, water is going to be drawn to uh, the side that is going to um, have a higher osmolarity. So uh, if you take back sodium chloride into the blood, then again, water is going to follow by osmosis, which would in turn increase your blood volume. And if you increase your blood volume, as you know, you are going to increase your blood pressure. Okay, so this whole system of renin and angiotensin and aldosterone uh, is going to uh, help you restore blood pressure when there is, is a sudden drop. So I'm just going to explain a little bit further about the, the flip side of this. Um, obviously, the RAS is going to be useful when you experience low blood pressure. However, if you are suffering from high blood pressure, if for some uh, reason that uh, your blood pressure is elevated beyond homeostasis, uh, we actually want to suppress um, this, this particular mechanism. Um, so if, for example, you just ate uh, a lot of chips and then there's a lot of sodium in your system, um, that might cause your blood pressure to increase. And, and so, how is your body going to suppress the RAS? So it turns out there is um, another uh, hormone. It's called the ANH. Okay, ANH stands for uh, atrial natriuretic hormone. Okay, so um, basically, um, natri means sodium. That's why the symbol for sodium is Na. Uretic means uh, in the urine. So this is a hormone that is going to cause you to urinate more sodium. And this hormone comes from the atrium of the heart. All right. So if there is an increase in blood pressure, um, then it's going to cause you to release A and H from the atrium. Uh, atria of the heart and one of the things that ANH will do is it's going to come and suppress the release of renin so without renin none of the uh, things that we talk about for RAS is going to happen and that actually is going to help you bring the blood pressure down but that's not it uh, what's going to happen is ANH actually has a second function it's also capable of suppressing the release of aldosterone and again uh, by suppressing the release of aldosterone uh, you are not going to be increasing the absorption of NaCl uh, at the distal tubule and collecting duct, which is why you will end up having a higher level of sodium and chloride in your urine. Uh, and that's what the name of the hormone uh, suggests, right? It is a natriuretic. It increases the amount of sodium and chlorine, uh, chloride in, in, in your urine. So um, this is a normal uh, uh, balance. You have two antagonistic hormones uh, working against each other to maintain homeostasis for blood pressure. And just one final thing. 
if a person suffers from uh, a chronic high blood pressure, uh, it's not uncommon for them to have to take medication to control their blood pressure. Um, so there are two types of uh, medications you can take. Um, you, the doctor might give you uh, what's called diuretic. Uh, diuretic is basically sometimes called water pill because it's going to uh, uh, make you go to the bathroom more frequently. And, and by doing that, you are basically decreasing your blood volume and, and therefore, uh, you are going to be able to bring your blood pressure down. But a second drug, a second uh, uh, class of drugs that you can take to control high blood pressure is what we call uh, ACE inhibitor. Okay, ACE inhibitor. By taking an ACE inhibitor, you essentially is going to, uh, again, suppress the, the, the RAS by not allowing angiotensin 1 to be converted into number 2. And if that doesn't happen, uh, everything downstream of, of this is, is not going to take place. Uh, and therefore, you are going to be able to bring your blood pressure down. So that's the uh, RAS system along with uh, 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 its antagonist as well as some drugs that you can take to suppress the system. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me or ask me uh, directly in class.